What's up guys, Tim here with the Tim Sports Talk. Today we are going to talk about Dwayne Haskins' article of In My Words where he goes over his rookie experience of his, his first NFL season. So we're going to go over that and then I'm also going to go into uh, dive into uh, what I think about, it, about last year and like kind of go over all of his games and go over what happened. So he started the article with draft day. And that's where he's, uh, he decided to stay home because he had a lot of family. You're only allowed to bring five people to draft in Nashville. So he decided to stay home because he had tons of cousins that he wanted to do, bring. Um, but what he doesn't mention is he also uh, had a cover charge to his NFL draft party. Uh, not a bad reason to skip. So he got to charge $50 a head uh, for everybody outside of his family that was uh, joined. They did it at a bowling alley. Um, actually, uh, I believe in Virginia, or maybe it was Maryland, where he uh, grew up. And uh, so that was cool. Um, so that's where he started, kind of where when he was drafted and when the Redskins picked his name and everything like that. So then he talks about when he comes to the Redskins, he uh, he's meeting AP and how he was in awe of him. Um, and then something else that's cool that he didn't mention yet because that he ended up his first play was giving a handoff to Adrian Peterson. So I thought that was kind of cool that he, he mentioned AP. Um, he then uh, mentions the quarterback room and he talks about Case and Colton Alex, how they all helped him in, during his first season. Um, but then he also talked about how he was going to compete for the starting job. So he took their advice, but he was knew that this, they're in a competition. So... Um, he talks about how the NFL game is much different than the college game. So the pros, they take it much more seriously. He talks about how, uh, like, all the little nuances of, like, all his tells and how Tim Settle and Ryan Anderson were telling him, like, hey, when you do this, I know that this is going to happen. So there's little things like that that he was learning that figuring out, like, okay, this is not just the uh, college level where – People show up to play on Saturday. You know they practice all week, but they're not looking at the little nuances like that. Some of the best ones are, but not a lot of the players that he was going against. So, um, and a, basically because of this, uh, he understood the decision to start Case Week One. You know, obviously he wanted to start, but knowing that he had just had so much more experience, he's gotten all the way to the NFC Championship game, that it made sense to him that okay, I understand why they're going with Case in Week 1. Um, he then starts going through ga some games that he played, which we'll go through in a minute. Um, and then he finishes by telling us that they are growing and doing things the right way. And I believe that. You know, Ron Rivera's come here. He's had a presence about him. And he's had uh, this aura that when he says something, the players are going to listen. And everything you hear coming out of uh, Carolina – he was not fired because he was a bad coach, that players didn't like him, people didn't like him. It was just that the there was a new owner of the Panthers, and he wanted to go in his own direction. That, you know, he didn't hire Ron Rivera. He didn't hire uh, the GMs. He didn't hire, uh, he didn't pick Cam Newton. So he kind of just wanted to, like, make his mark on his new team that he, I think he's only bought it since uh, 2017 or 2018. Like, he's a pretty new owner. So it made sense that he... He wants to get his own guys. So, but, so just thinking about the article in general, at first I didn't really like the idea of him writing this, but um, when I read it, it changed it. Because one thing that I saw that it, apparently he wrote for his high school uh, sports, uh, like he was the sports editor for the newspaper in high school. So it seems like he kind of enjoys writing things like this. I know that it says that he uh, was helped writing with one of the Redskins writers, but it was it's talk it's uh, written in first person, so it's written like I did this, then I was here, me, blah blah blah, things like that. And um, but he also didn't take jabs at anyone. Um, he just talked about his experience, and I thought it was uh, uh well written, well done. Uh, I thought it was also kind of cool when he was a sports editor. He he talks about how he wrote about RG three because he did grow up in the area, so he wrote about uh DC sports as well while he was there. But, um, but yeah, so I thought it was pretty well done and, uh, you can find the entire article at redskins.com. I'll put the link down in the description so you can find it and read it, uh, go through it yourself. But 
now I wanted to take this opportunity to kind of go over his rookie year and see what I thought about it and what, um, like, what did I see through his first season. And so I went through and watched all the games where he played in. He played in nine, started in seven, and um, just kind of got an idea of where I, what, did he regress? Did he uh, decline? Like what? Because you look at his total stats, and uh, he had seven interceptions, seven touchdowns, like thirteen hundred yards, which in seven starts that's less than two hundred a game. So not great numbers, but. He's a rookie, so we saw this coming. Everybody knew that when he came out that he was going to be more of a project. Nobody thought that he was, like, a week one starter. Um, at least a lot of people didn't, and uh, obviously J Jay Gruden didn't think so. So we start here at the Giants, and this was uh, week four. He came in off the bench um, to uh, replace Case Keenum. I think it was late in the second quarter, and it was he started down 14-0. Never, never great for your first time coming out. You're starting down fourteen to nothing, and it was not very good. Um, he had his first completion to Kelvin Harmon, and um, he actually had a decent first drive. They actually got within the a five yard line. I believe they got down to the three yard line, um, but they couldn't quite punch it in, and so they ended up settling for a field goal, and uh, not much on the next drive. But on the third drive, he has a pick that I'm hoping is going to be the worst pick of his career because he pretty much did everything wrong. There's nothing right he did on this play. It sucks. <laughs> um, I mean, he's a rookie, so of course you'd expect these kind of things. But he threw off of his back foot. He had pressure in his face, threw it over the middle of the field, off his back foot. Uh, he like looked at the receiver, or the tight end for way too long, and Japrio Peppers just undercuts it. Easy pick six. Like You can say that was his first touchdown throw of his career. Um, no, but it, it was just, it was way too easy for an NFL safety. It, he did everything wrong. Um, he ended up having three picks on the game. The, the next one, he, they tried to hit, uh, Paul Richardson on a double move, um, against Janoris Jenkins. I don't really, really like that matchup choice, but, um, you can see that he pump fakes it and he tries to get him on the, uh, quick out and then he out and up and it, Janoris Jenkins was all over it. Uh, he was the only one that was going to catch the ball. wasn't well placed. And the last one was to Vernon Davis, and it was uh, again Janoris Jen Jenkins. And this was a timing thing. So he wasn't getting any of the uh, first team reps. He tries to zip it into uh, Vernon Davis on a comeback route, and uh, he throws it too early. Vernon Davis turns around, doesn't have enough time to get his hands up, and ends up bouncing off of Vernon Davis's hands and goes right into Janoris Jenkins' hands instead. So um, he finished the day with uh, nine of seventeen completion, uh, nine completions on seventeen attempts, one hundred and seven yards, zero touchdowns, and three interceptions. Not pretty. So he talked about this in the article that uh, he talks about um, looking at the film, and he's like what was I thinking? Like, he talks about how it was just not pretty. Like, what's wrong with me? Why was I doing these things? I just threw 50 touchdowns in Ohio State last year, and now I'm throwing three interceptions at the NFL level and just looking like a dweeb. It was bad. So the next game he plays in was a few weeks later against Minnesota. He comes in after halftime, and he comes in down seven. So again, he comes down, but this time it's only seven. Um, he His first pass, he somehow... Uh, slung it into AP. Like, if you watch this play, it, that was a pick. Like, even the uh, commentators was like, it's picked up. Wait, no. Like, AP somehow comes away with that thing. Like, Dwayne Haskins has an arm. So he's he zipped it in past that linebacker. And uh, so that was a kind of a interesting pass. But So that was his first one. And then, uh, let's see. Uh, the next time he, like, they didn't uh, score... Or they end up getting a field goal on that drive. And the next time he comes in, he's down 16-9. to nine, And he actually had the ball at the 30-yard line because it was a turnover on downs where uh, uh, Minnesota went up for it on fourth. And uh, I think it was like a fourth and one. We ended up stopping him. And so we ended up getting the ball on the 30-yard line. But unfortunately, he throws a ball to Terry McLaurin that's just a little too high. Terry did get his hands on it, but it was like he was fully stretched out, and it ends up bouncing off his hands and going right into a defender's 
So another interception, um, and that was in the fourth quarter. So we actually had a chance in that Minnesota game, and then they ended up coming back down and scoring, and it was pretty much all over from there. That game, he didn't he didn't get a lot of attempts either because after that pick, um, I pretty much Minnesota just ran the ball like they, they just completely ran down the clock, and then we got the ball back, and then I think that that was Jeremy Sprinkle. He fumbled it and gave it back to him, and then like pretty much Dwayne had no more attempts after that interception. So um, on the day, he went three for five completions, uh, 33 yards, zero touchdowns, one interception. Again, nothing to write home about. Um, And then next week, he gets his first chance to start. So this is against Buffalo. And Buffalo was a really good defense last year. So that's a tough one to come in as this is your first game that you're preparing for as a rookie. And it's against a really good defense and specifically a really good pass defense. They had a lot of good uh, secondary players over there and a good pass rush. So that was, you knew that it was going to be a tough day. But Adrian Peterson that game was an absolute beast. He had 90 yards in the first half or almost 90 yards. uh, Averaged like 10 yards a carry in the first half. Just running hard, and it, even actually there was one in the third quarter where uh, number thirty nine for Buffalo he comes off the edge and has just a free shot at Adrian Peterson. Like he, he's going to get him easily, and Adrian Peterson just makes this kid look like a little boy. Stiffs arm, throws him down, and ends up getting an eight yard run run out of it. So Adrian Peterson uh, kept us in the game. But this one actually, again, we were uh, he actually Dwayne actually had two opportunities uh, in the fourth quarter of this game when we were down by eight. But uh, some inaccuracies, some poor line play, some drops. Uh, and again, we just couldn't get the offense moving. So um, his final numbers on today, he did not have an interception, which was good. But he, only, he And he did go 15 of 22, but there was a lot of screen plays in this Buffalo game. Like, they abused the screens in this game. Like, I think, that, like, out of the 15, they may have been seven or eight completions of those were screen plays and there was not much downfield he did have one play that he threw it downfield it was a nice throw terry caught it but we ended up getting a holding call and that brought it back but the uh overall what he actually was able to do it was a lot of short uh intermediate play like short to inter- sh- very short to short it was hardly intermediate it was very short to short plays pretty much all game and again we could not score a touchdown so we ended up losing that one 24 to 9 and the following week is the Jets, and the Jets were not having a good season at this point either, but we played abysmally. The whole team was just awful. Like For nearly three quarters, it was bad. Um, he Dwayne had another interception in those three quarters where he um, threw in a short route to uh, Trey Quinn. He was double covered. Quinn tried to like make another move, and it, but Dwayne had already thrown it, and it ends up going right into the defender's hands. It was not a good play. But after that interception, the very following drive, it happens. And what happens is that he gets his first NFL touchdown. It came on a screen pass to Darius Geis. And it was actually Darius Geis' first touchdown as well. I don't know who got the uh, football for that. Um, I I don't know who got I, I would assume it was Dwayne, but at the same time, Geis kind of did most of the work. It was a screen pass, and it was a 45-yard screen pass. It was it was good running by J- Darius Geis. So, and then he also ended up getting the two-point conversion. Uh, it was a nice pump fake to make the uh, defensive end jump. Uh, he ends up getting around him and then finds Trey Quinn open on the uh, on the left side of the end zone. So it was a, it was a nice play um, from uh, Dwayne there. And let's see. Uh, oh, and then later in the game. Uh, the game's over like we're being blown out but you know we're still throwing guys out there we're all very young so it's good to get experience he throws a deep ball down the left side of the field to terry mclaurin where mclaurin just makes this ridiculous catch uh, it looks like the defender's going to pick it off he jumps over top of him right near the out of bounds lands in bounds comes down with it it was a ridiculous catch but then uh, later that drive uh Dwayne ends up getting a another touchdown to sprinkle and So he had two touchdowns on the day, uh, one interception. He had 19 of 35 completions for 214 yards. Um, As I said, the beginning of the game was really, really bad. Um, Dwayne was all over the place, but we also, just as an entire team, did not look good that day. Um, Jets defense really embarrassed us. So that was not fantastic. So the next game is Detroit 
where, again, Haskins did not play well. And he had help of the defense and a Steve Sims kick return. And we ended up getting Dwayne Haskins' first victory. On the day, he was 13 of 29 completions, 156 yards, zero touchdowns, one pick, and a fumble. Um, but with five and a half minutes left in the game, down by three, he goes four for five. And the fifth barely overthrown to Terry McLaurin in the end zone. He almost scored a touchdown to take the lead right away. But we were down by three, so we ended up getting uh, infield field goal range. Uh, Dustin Hopkins makes the field goal with about, I think it was like two minutes left. And then the defense gets the ball, or the defense is on the field, and they end up getting, they, they almost had one pick. Jimmy Moreland uh, drops a pick. But then the very next play, I believe it was Quentin Dunbar, he gets the uh, pick to at around the uh, 50-yard line, maybe uh, 45 of ours. And uh, Dwayne Haskins has a nice 10-yard run and two more completions, and that was enough to get Dustin Hopkins to get, attempt what should have been a walk-off field goal. They had first down with 20 seconds left, and instead of you know kneeling it or doing a simple run play to center up, let the clock run, spike the ball with five seconds left, Coach... Uh, he ends up coming out and sending out the kicking unit with 20 seconds left. And so we end up giving them a chance to potentially, they have two timeouts in this situation. So now they have 15 seconds to maybe get two big plays. And now all of a sudden it could be a tie game. So I, that was really weird coaching, but, um, but we end up getting another pick. Uh, Jeff Driscoll did not have a good game. And a uh, funny story at the end was that, uh, Dwayne was so excited celebrating his first victory that he did not come on the field to do the final kneel down after the interception. So uh, Case Keenum actually had to run onto the field um, and do the final kneel of the game. But the next game, the next week, we played Carolina, and this ended up being an extremely important game. Most of you know why. Um, so in this game, you could see... Uh, Haskins accuracy starting to improve um there was a lot of drops in this game uh he was starting to place the ball much better uh but there was just there was passes that people should have been catching that it's it's sunk because he ended up going I believe it was 13 for 25 so just over 15 percent but I count at least five drops in there and then on top of that there was one where Terry McLaurin didn't really know where he was um, on the field and he was running on the white line of the end zone and he ends up uh, catching what should have been a touchdown but he was way out of bounds so five drops on top of that one so there's you know six completions so that could all of a sudden jump you up to 19 out of 25 that's a really good field, uh, field goal percentage real good uh, completion percentage he had 147 yards zero touchdowns zero picks um, and we ended up winning the game because Geis and Adrian Peterson go berserk in this game. Uh, Geis had 129 yards and two touchdowns. Uh, Adrian Peterson had 99 yards and a touchdown. So we end up winning this game 29-21. And most importantly, we won the head coach. The next day, uh, Ron Rivera gets fired. Now he's our coach. So we, we that was the game for Ron Rivera. Ron Rivera may have been fired anyway, but because we won that game, he got fired that day. All right, so on to the next game. We talk about the Packers game. And one point in the second quarter, he had been sacked more times than he had completed passes. He had been sacked three times and only had two completions. Um, but And then he did have an interception in this game. But that interception came with like eight seconds left in the second quarter where he was just trying to throw the ball downfield and just make a play happen. So it didn't really hurt us. It didn't have any effect on the final uh, final score because they didn't score uh, back because they literally just ran out of bounds. Uh, Aaron Rodgers came in, knelt the ball. So it was kind of more of just like, all right, let me just throw it downfield and see what happens. If he catches it, great. If not, oh well. So is that really a problem that he threw that pick? I mean, you'd rather him not throw picks, but... That's if you're gonna throw a pick, that's the best time to do it. Um, again, he had a chance to tie the game down by eight in the fourth quarter, but unfortunately missed a throw to Kelvin Harmon and was not able to score. He was able to drive and throw a TD down when he we were down eleven. Green Bay had scored a field goal to go up by eleven, but uh, the onside kick failed and we did not get a chance to tie or take the lead 
uh, later. Um, but again, just a fantastic catch by Terry McLaurin. I'm really, I, most Redskins fans are, but I'm really excited about Terry McLaurin because that was just one handed, uh, two guys on him in the end zone. It was a beautiful touchdown. So, all right, on the day, he had 16 for 27 completions, 170 yards, one touchdown, and one interception. Uh, we ended up losing the game 20 to 15. Um, now we go to the Eagles game. And this, in my opinion, was Dwayne's best game. Um, he had a beautiful dig route uh, to t- Scary Terry, hit him right in stride, uh, and ends up being a 75 yard touchdown. Uh, and then uh, the next drive, he has this play where he, an op- he has an option with uh, Darius Geis, I believe. Or do I have it written down here? Uh, no, it was with Peterson. So he runs over, and the defensive end is just screaming right at him. And he fakes the pitch to Adrian Peterson. The defensive end goes, sees that he fakes, comes back, and he ends up throwing on the other side of the defensive end. So instead of throwing on this side, he throws on the other side of the defensive end. Adrian Peterson catches it in stride and ends up getting a nice big play out of it. Um, it just... It was nice to see, like it looked. It was looking like more he had command of what was going on, um, and I have a good example of this later in one of the games that I think it was against Buffalo, and then how he improved later. Um, let's see. Uh, then he had a nice uh, pass to Steven Sims in the back of the end zone. Uh, barely got in. Uh, Steven Sims did. He did really good to keep his feet in bounds um, and got into the end zone. Uh, he had a good completion percentage, uh, even with uh, he had again a few more drops, but he even then he had a sixty-seven point nine completion percentage on the day, um, and uh, on the last play of the game, uh, z- the clock's at zero. He's about to get sacked. He has the stupid lateral play where he throws it backwards, and they end up scoring a touchdown to I think ruin the. Uh, it was either ruin the over under or ruin the spread, but he just like throws the ball hoping that somebody would pick it up. Unfortunately, the Eagles picked it up and ran it back. So, again, it's another turnover of where he's just trying to make something happen when it like the clock's hitting zero. You, there's taking a sack there does nothing. Like it, you had to try to do something. So I don't knock that. So uh, end of that day for the I think the best day of this uh, year was nineteen for twenty eight, two hundred and sixty one yards and two touchdowns. And it was a tough game. We we were right in that game with the Eagles. Um, the Eagles ended up going to the playoffs, and uh, we were right there. The final score was 37-27, to 27, but as I said, we had that fumble where it was kind of made the score bigger than what it really was. Um, then the last game he had uh, was against the Giants. Unfortunately, he got hurt uh, on the first uh, drive of the second half, but he had a fantastic start. Two drives, two touchdowns. Um, this was his highest uh, passer rating on the day, but I said the Eagles was a better day because he actually played the entire game. Who knows what would have happened if he continued to play this game. Maybe this would have been his best game, but he had another really good day. And his first touchdown is something I want to talk about. Cause what he did earlier against Buffalo was there was one particular play where it's third and three, and he gets pressure in the pocket. He steps up, and Trey Quinn is right there at the uh, first down line, and he, he's covered. Um, Dwayne Haskins tucks the ball, and he's pretty well behind the line of scrimmage, maybe four or five yards, tucks the ball, and as soon as he tucks it, the three defenders that were right there all collapse right on Dwayne. And he does not keep his eyes downfield, because if he did, he would see that Trey Quinn just made a simple movement over to the other side, and he could have easily just, up, oh, boom, first down, Right. But that was what his that was his first start of the year, and he just didn't have that in him yet. This touchdown to uh, Trey Quinn, uh, I believe it was, yeah, this one was Trey Quinn. His first one was exactly that type of play. He, it's on the like five yard line. He steps back, looking. Nobody's open. He feels pressure around him. He steps up. He actually runs away from the pressure. Keeps his eyes downfield. Uh, the linebacker comes screaming up towards him, flicks it right over him, boom, touchdown. And it's that kind of stuff that you see the progression in Dwayne throughout the entire season. Where his final two games, he didn't throw a touch, uh, didn't throw an interception, um, and he 
he had two touchdowns in both those games, and he was playing really well. Um, unfortunately, he got hurt in the Giants game. And then his second touchdown was to Hale Hitchens, just in the left side of the end zone. Uh, pretty standard play. It was just a corner route, and Hitchens, Hitchens was right open. And uh, then he got hurt in the first uh, third, first drive of the third quarter. And the takeaways here is, so when you see his stats, you saw seven touchdowns and seven interceptions. Well, before he threw a single touchdown, he had already thrown five interceptions. Five. He had three in his first one, uh, uh, one against Buffalo and one against Minnesota. And no, not against Buffalo, one against the Jets. One against the Jets and one against Minnesota, three against the Giants. So he had not thrown a touchdown yet, and he had five interceptions. So that means he finished with seven touchdowns to two interceptions. And we already talked about in that Green Bay, that one interception was really just, I'm going to try to chuck it downfield, see if my receiver can win. And it didn't hurt us at all because it was eight seconds left in the second quarter. They didn't get any points. He tried to make something happen. So you could almost look at it where he had seven touchdowns to only one interception towards the end of the season. And that is exactly the progression that you want to see. Um, you saw it with different things on the field like I explained with that one play. And then you also see in the statistics uh, gradually keep increasing as he got experience. I thought that his rookie season was really, really good. Um, and I know most of you don't know, I wanted him to start week one last year um, because I was somebody that was not a Dwayne Haskins fan. I did not want to draft Dwayne Haskins. Um, I actually wanted Drew Locke, to be, uh, to be honest. But now that we had him, I was like, I would love nothing more than to be wrong about a player. I did not think he was going to be good at the NFL. But what I'm seeing here, and I wanted him to start week one, because I wanted him to be able to show, like, okay, can you progress or are you not? And we need to go draft a quarterback next year with our high pick, if not. But this is exactly what you wanted to see in seven starts out of him, nine games. Not good in the beginning, but by the end, you could actually see the things that he needed to work on. He improved. His stats improved. His numbers improved. His confidence on the field. as I, like He never would have faked the one way, uh, been able to run, and then give it to AP against Buffalo. That was not happening. Like He had, did not have the confidence against Buffalo to do some things like that, and he progressively got more confident. And I'm excited. I think that this um, Dwayne Haskins is going to be our starter week one, even with the corona business, if he had to learn the system. I know some people think that Kyle Allen could potentially start because he knows Ron Rivera's system. They're doing the Zoom calls. He's in the playbook. He's learning it all. Um, he's not going to get a bunch of the reps, but before they play a single game, they're going to have practice, and Dwayne Haskins is going to be the starter. Um, this, this, These were really good things to see out of him. So, um, All in all, I liked the uh, article. I liked his rookie season. I liked what they talked about, and yes, thank you for joining me today, and see you next time. Later.